Yeah, baby! I'm the 2K MC, and it's time to check out what's happening in NBA 2K20, starting in the neighborhood with your 2K Compete event schedule. Saturday, it's time for Big Top Challenge. Use that giant noggin to complete three challenges and take down the mascots. Hit the wreck on Sunday Funday and earn double rep all day long. Tuesday, we've got more double rep happening all day, but this time it's on the 4v4 courts. And Thursday, Sports. We have the NBA coming up. Great to have you with us. This is Kevin Harlan along courtside with Brent Perry and Greg Anthony. We've got and a chance to take a look at some numbers for Sharich. And the biggest takeaway when you look at his numbers is how good his three-point shooting has been the past five weeks. He's finding the open spots on the perimeter, and when he's getting good looks, boy, he is not missing. And now the opening lineup for Phoenix. Sharich and Aiton at the four and the five. Rubio and Booker, they're the backcourt. And it's Oubre in at the three. And for Charlotte, we've got Bridges. Here we go. Bismack Biambo is out there with Washington. Then there's Terry Rozier. And it's Graham in at the two. Rubio looking around. The playoffs around the corner, Brent. Some teams already making vacation plans. Uh, talk about the disappointment that those kinds of teams are feeling right now. Yeah, you, you start the beginning of training camp with ideas of wanting to play into the postseason, and, and you know the realization of that uh, goal is, is not going to be met. And what you want to do is remember your opportunity as a player, Kevin, to go out and still compete. You might not be back with the team that you're playing at the end of the season, with the last 10 games. Maybe you're somewhere else. But there are teams, as we've always said, still watching you. And so don't ever get away from the idea of the competition as the season winds well, down. They always say the eye in the sky doesn't lie. Everything is on tape, right? I mean, yeah, and, and they are assessing how it is that absolutely. you approach that because you show your stripes uh, when, when things are not going well. What kind of character do you have? And the basket is good. He's a pretty high percentage shooter from there. Eight in size and touch. It's a pretty tough combo to go against. Here's Graham. 27 point outing in their last game against the Heat in Miami. And also in that one, he had the opposition on pins and needles on the defensive end of the floor, recording four steals that night on his way to an overall stellar game. Charge. A rebound by Washington. I'll be honest, I thought there's no way that he's missing that close. That's a bunny. Give it up for the aggressive defense, Kevin. Uncovered at the rim, finding cracks in the defense here early on. Just really smart basketball and exploiting whatever holes that he's seeing right now in the defensive squad. Booker looking around. Rubio with a wide open look. Off target from three point range. The Hornets have gone two or three here to start out the game. Here's Graham. Defended by Booker. That's tipped. Well, Aiden flashing some good movement there and great timing. Booker outside. Here's Rubio. That's in, and he found his range with that one. Now one for two. When the player gets a feel for that floater, it can really make things tough on defenders. You're just not sure how to guard them and where your point of commitment is. Rogier against Oubre. Rogier the pass to Bridges. There's the feed to Graham. A shot off that time. Good D by Booker. Things are going south right now. This is not the type of shooting that his teammates expect from him. Oh, Aiton in position. Well, Booker has established that he can score and now showing that he can playmaker. Hornets trail by five. 
Uh, every shot in his arsenal, Devin Booker, is pretty impressive. He can shoot it from deep. He moves well without the basketball. He can create with others. He is a young offensive force and is an interesting player to watch in terms of what develops next. Making the most of the screen. That's how it's done. And it's in the perfect spot, Greg. Frees him up to get all the way to the bucket. Really not enough help there. Lack of communication on the backside. Here's Hayton. Doesn't get it to drop for him. And the Hornets now going the other way. And Brent with Booker, the ball handling and creativity he has puts him among the elite guards in the league. You wonder if Phoenix can find a way to get some more talent around Devin Booker. What happens when all of the attention is not on him? He's already proven he's a great scorer. Where else can he go? That is a product of pure effort, guys. I agree, and that's nothing new coming from him, GA. He loves it. Next up, we have a very special guest. Let's see if you guys can figure out who it is. Here are some clues. He's a five-time NBA All-Star. That's right, and he had an epic run with the Sacramento Kings. In fact, his jersey is hanging from the rafters. Welcome to the WNBA on 2K Sports. And tonight we've got the Los Angeles Sparks playing against the Dallas Wings. From the 2K booth with Brian Banifatemi and Tim Swartz, I'm Blake Suniga. Thanks for coming along. And one of the most exciting things about the WNBA, the draft is usually three days after the college season ends and only about a month before opening night. How do you guys like that setup? It's really the best way to do a draft, if you ask me, because you see all of the excitement of Vegas drafting Asia Wilson and then getting to see her play just weeks later. Or how about Seattle getting to see Brianna Stewart in action quickly after winning a title? So I'm just going to say it's a fantastic way to drum up interest. I love it too, Brian. Instead of the months and months of speculation about you know, how someone fits in, we actually get to see them play. It's awesome. You keep the momentum going too. And best of all, we get to see who is for real. It's good on the putback. Persistence. It's one of the main components of Thornton's game. A motor that just keeps on going, turning the board into points. Pass to Agumake. Ruffin Pratt. And here is Gray. Tipped away. Skyler Diggins Smith with the steal. Number three, Kayla Thornton. It's good. The assist that time from Skyler Diggins Smith. And this is the start they wanted. Come out and put some points up early, hitting three of four. Here's Ruffin Pratt, covered by Thornton. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on Diggins Smith. That is her first foul of the game. And so just over a minute and a half played. Here's Ruffin Pratt, covered by Thornton. Five on the clock. Parker. No good. Unable to end this run. Thornton outside. Knocked away. Here's Parker. The shot goes in. First of the night, she is one for three to start the contest. Come on. You, you think a little contact is going to stop Candace Parker? No way. Too strong. Too much desire. Now here's Agumba Wale to the middle. And they're going to count the bucket and send her to the line. It could be a three-point play.
Well, you look at the advanced stats, and of course we love doing that, and then the Sparks stand out in one major way. They try to slow the, the game down as much as possible. Have been last in the league, or near the bottom in pace for several seasons now. the Sparks in their new pace, it makes sense when you look at their personnel. Well, when you have Parker and Aguma K, it's the right play. I mean, those two on the blocks are an absolute force, and the Sparks, they go for efficiency in their possessions, and they try to prevent the game from turning into a track team. That's just great ball movement. And that's key this run, passing it with a purpose. The D has not been able to keep up. Now, here's Williams. And so she draws the foul on the shot. A trip to the line to shoot two. And Skylar Diggins-Smith, uh, such a huge part of this team. She's a fantastic playmaker who goes right at the defense. And I like to call her the catalyst for her team. With Diggins Smith, she is just relentless when on the floor. The way she can push the tempo can shape this team's offense, creates so many good looks for herself and others. Also, quite simply, one of the most entertaining players to watch in the league. Trip coming up empty, missing both. And Candace Parker, uh, undoubtedly one of the dominant bigs in the WNBA. And at 6'4, she has great footwork on the block and when going at the rim. And there's just no way to slow her down. And she has been a force in this league for years. Now, here's Parker. Williams, guarded now by Agumba Wale. Shot clock at six. Here's Williams. The Sparks, no good that time either. With Parker, she gives you so much as a big down on the block. It's not just the scoring and rebounding, Blake. She's also just a totally complete player, one of the best passers ever at her position. She's a star and one of the faces of the league. The shot misses. The wings go the other way with it. Down low, Harrison. And Brian, when it comes to guarding someone on ball, one on one, who do you see as the best in the business? Elena Beard is the first that comes to mind, Blake. As a guard, to get multiple Defensive Player of the Year awards, that is really special. So if we're talking about on the perimeter, she's my choice. And if we're talking about the inside, Brittany Griner is the choice. Just dominant with her 6'9 length, her long arms, and nasty streak. Good luck posting her up. Both teams deciding to change it up.
Chris Weber, welcome to 2K TV, man. Hey, what's up, Chris? Hey, thanks for having me on, man. Absolutely. I know the fans are excited to hear from you. So let's get started. Do you have one NBA moment in your career that stands out above the rest? Draft night. For me, it was just crazy because it was the Palace of Auburn Hills. It was in Detroit. You know, uh, I won state championships there. And then, you know, every other moment was made possible because of that moment. Awesome. Now, you've played on a lot of great teams. Is there a team that stands out that you really enjoy? Welcome to 2K Sports. As we get a break in the action, now let's take a look at the East and how the teams are stacking up. Look at the Heat, advantage in one series. And you know for the Heat, they've moved toward the postseason with one of the best records in the league. Safe to say, this is not where most people thought they'd be at this stage of the year. Yet yeah, here they are. And at this point, you've got to think they're set up to make a serious run in the postseason. So the opening lineup for the Heat, Jones is out there with Jimmy Butler. Then it's Robinson. Then it's Bam Adebayo. And it's none in at the point. And for Memphis, Jackson and Valanciunas, they're in the middle. Morant and Brooks manning the backcourt. And it's Winslow in at the three. Now here's Morant. Jimmy Butler unable to get his last shot to go. Six to shoot. Here's Valanciunas. And it's Miami with the rebound. They just couldn't come out on top last time they took on the Grizzlies. That one was played in Memphis. Yeah, and, and their last time playing against this club, they fell short. A lot of cheap fouls really plagued their starting unit. Hopefully they exercise better caution in this game and avoid cheap fouls that could get them in trouble again. Brooks against Robinson. Brooks the pass to Valanciunas. Robinson pulls it in. The Heat have gone one of three from the field to start this one so far. The Grizzlies coaching search took two months. They finally settled on Taylor Jenkins, a former assistant coach with the Milwaukee Bucks. Jenkins, with an economics degree from Penn, fits the young academic profile of this Memphis front office. Worked for the Spurs six years as an assistant under Mike Budenholzer, who was the coach of the year in 2019. That pedigree helped him get the job. He gets that one. Love the recognition. Realizes that one is all him. Sometimes that's the call. You want to be unselfish, but even more so, you want to be effective. Now here's Morant. He had a 21-point outing in their last game against the Trailblazers in Portland. Yeah, and I look at his total effect on the scoring, both as a passer and a shooter. Incredibly productive. Now here's Butler. Jonas Valanciunas unable to get his shot to go. Here's none. He had an 18-point outing in the last game against Charlotte. The Heat need to get a shot off. Jones, no luck. For Memphis, they've gone 0-4, missing their first four field goals here. Winslow kicks to Brooks. Down low. Here's Valanciunas. No one on him, and he makes the easy one. And the lid comes off the basket after four straight misses. They finally get one. Out to the right wing. Robinson against Brooks. Outside Butler. Three-pointer. Grizzlies with the rebound. They're moving on after the tough loss they took at the hands of the Blazers. Winslow, the pass to Brooks. And here's Morant. Those three-pointers off the mark. Just under three and a half minutes gone here in the first quarter. Robinson, that's good. And a 
Nice job here early of establishing an inside presence. And we've got an update here, so let's check in with David Aldridge reporting from the sideline. Thank you, Kevin. Well, a bit ago, Taylor Jenkins and I were able to chat. He talked about the threat posed by Jimmy Butler, saying, it's incredible the work he's done to make himself such a well-rounded scorer. Kevin, they better be ready for the terror from Tomball, Texas. Back to you. Thank you, David. And he's a good shooter from outside, but not sure from that deep. You know, we're seeing players move further and further back to create space, but that does make it a tougher shot. And they bump this quarter. He's trying to shoot his way out of it. Now here's Morant. Nothing yet on the scoreboard for him. 11 feet out, and he hits it. Steve, we're seeing more and more teams turn to high-motion offenses with a lot of passing, a lot of movement. What makes those systems, do you think, successful in today's game? That, that was special. We added the 2002 Kings team as a classic team in NBA 2K a few years ago. What was special about that 2002 team? Man, what was special was the city, playing in that arena with the Cowbells, and, and then the players, the Doug Christie's and Bobby Jackson. Up next, the Knicks taking on... We welcome you to Noche Enabia here on 2K Sports. And let's check out a breakdown. Looking at some stats for Culver. And his three-point shooting has gotten a lot better over his last 10 games. He looks so much more comfortable from beyond. There's no doubt he's got the green light to let it fly whenever the shot's there for him. And checking out Minnesota's opening lineup. Beasley is out there with D'Angelo Russell. Then there's Towns. And it's a Kogi in at the three, the small forward. And for New York... They've got Taj Gibson. Harkless is out there with Julius Randle. Then there's Elford Payton, and it's Barrett at the two. And so it's the Minnesota Timberwolves getting the first points of the ball game. Payton uses the glass to finish the layup. Well, with the playoffs coming up quickly, Clark's strength of schedule can play a big role as it uh, determines where a team is going to be seated uh, come playoff time. No, I agree with you in terms of even just making the playoffs sometimes, Kevin, yes. based on where teams are and who they're playing. I mean, those matchups against potential playoff teams that are still fighting for seeding, they can sharpen you up and get you ready. And actually, those games can be playoffs before the playoffs in many ways. And I always admire the coaches, Clark, that walk their players through the different scenarios because they should be aware. Yeah, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Um, you want everything out in front of you. As long as your team is able to handle it, and most of these teams can, I think that's a good point. Here's Russell following the basket by Alfred Payton. Count that one. Man, what a nice read, boy. Exquisite, perfect timing by D'Angelo off the pick and roll. Payton passes to Harkless. Out left of the wing. Passes it to Payton. Just five to shoot. Goes up on the wing. No good. So Minnesota will take it the other way. First chance of the season for them to go up against this Knicks team. And one of the few bright spots of their last season was sweeping the season series in this matchup. Yeah, for sure. Neither team a big-time contender in their respective conferences, Greg, but when the teams are fairly evenly matched, they can still be entertaining basketball. Now, here's Barrett. After the miss from Carl Anthony Towns, Barrett kicks to Payton. to Gibson. That's good. And it's Peyton with the assist. Yeah, you know, this is the totality of Gibson's game. I mean, he's a guy who takes on everybody when he's looking to score. Deep two from Russell. Oh, and that one had the right spit on it, and it is good. And off to a strong start offensively. He's got a nice
Nice touch. Eight in the bounce pass. Towns against Gibson. Pass to Barrett. A floater. Peyton against Beasley. Peyton's shot is off. And it's Russell with the ball. He'll bring it up for the Timberwolves. And you think about the two best talents in Wolves history. KG, obviously, and probably Big Cat. I would not disagree. I mean, KG is a Hall of Famer. And the Cat, Carl Anthony Towns, has been terrific early in his career. The rebounding and scoring, the versatility at, at that size between those two guys. Boy, it could have possibly been like the Admiral and Tim Duncan. Well, maybe not quite that good, but really good. And the story here, Kevin, early on is how well they've shot the basketball. Very high percentage so far, and if you want to start a game hot, that's the way to do it. And the Knicks decide to take their first time out here. You know, early in his career, there were questions surrounding D'Angelo Russell's maturity, and understandably so, that's the case with most young players. But of late, in his case, his improvement as a player and his growth as a person is impressive. So New York ends up going with the new group. Now, here's Bullock. He's coming off a 10-point game against Atlanta. Neely Kina passes to Portis. That one good for two. And that's what you want to see. Good fundamental sound basketball with the bounce pass. And beginning his career with the Lakers, coaches wanted Russell to take a more serious approach. Yeah, you know what? I think his last year there, losing the trust of his teammates, probably woke him up a bit. Sometimes you got to go through the adversity to recognize what you need to change. It's not enough to just put up numbers. You've got to be a professional in how you go about your business and plenty to like about where D'Angelo Russell is and where he's headed. Yeah, another nice bucket down low. They've really been able to work the ball into the post effectively here so far. Now, here is Robinson. He's coming off a 10-point game against Atlanta. Knox misses. Minnesota leading by six. 122 left in the first quarter of the game. Here's Reed. 11 points for him in that last game against the Rockets in Houston. Here's Lehman. The Knicks pull it in. They're coming into this game off that recent loss to Atlanta. They've been looking out of sync offensively. Yeah, the, the, their offense has ground to a standstill. The Timberwolves have gone 7 of 11 from the field to begin the game. He's now 1 for 2 with that bucket. And the defense, no factor which is why he simply laid it in. Here's Neil Aquino. 20 points for him last game against the Hawks in Atlanta. Here's Knox. The pass to Neil Aquino. Shot clock at six. Let's go. Here's Robinson, and contact on the shot, so he'll be shooting free throws here. It goes on Jared Culver. And really, the defense fouling there to prevent the layup, but that's exactly what you need to do. It is. I mean, no reason to back off and give him the layup. I mean, much better off making him go to the line. And New York making a change here. Ellington's checked in. Robinson hits them both. The Minnesota Timberwolves come into this one following a loss to the Rockets. Yeah, I mean, on the road, their defense was just overrun. Couldn't match the intensity of the opponent, and it cost them. And you know what, guys? It just seemed like they never really had the kind of energy necessary. They just weren't comfortable on the defensive end. Here's Culver. Nice shot from the wing. Does it for the first quarter. Timberwolves lead by six. Let's take it. Ladies and gentlemen, dance team.